How's it, bro? How's it going? Welcome to this video. I've got a really cool video for you today. I think you might actually get annoyed with you. Some of you guys might be thinking, what the heck is going on with this dude's brain? Uh, but I'm going to announce the my prediction for the team against Los Pumas on the weekend. So uh, I want to get this video out just before the, uh, the team was announced. But, you know, I should have had it done yesterday, but... I'm a little bit late, but in any case, you might be have already seen the team announcement, but at least I can get my prediction in there, stick my neck out and give you some of my thoughts. I'm not going to go into in-depth. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, this one. So uh, I've got some great analysis coming for you uh, with some great videos this week. So I think you're going to love them. I'm going to give a deep dive into how many changes we've made in all the different positions and who I think are the best uh, players and why um who our fines are so far and um and then give you some stats and that that you might look at and it all might make sense in terms of russie's great scheme of things right and just remember here it's like i'm not trying to um criticize the box or i'm not trying to criticize russie in that i mean i'm not even fit to tie that guy's laces right so uh this is all about having good fun and sharing our thoughts and you know being a the armchair critic or not even critic, man. Let's just be the armchair armchair discussion. Like I said, a little community where we share our, our thoughts and have a little bit of fun, right? So I'm not trying to be anybody special. I'm not a professional analyst or anything like that, right? This is just my passion. I've loved the game. I've loved it since I was a little boy. And uh, yeah, so here we are. Okay, so we got the test coming up in Nelspreit, Bombella Stadium. We got Irvin the Great uh coming up possibly if he takes a field 128 test caps so you'll stand alone at the top of the pile the most capped springbok of all time and you know is after guys like victor matfield and bucky's boot uh, as a combination but victor by himself when he retired you thought like there can't be anybody else who who is here um, who's going to fill his shoes is like a once in a generational talent. And there was that kid playing next to him, alongside him, Eben Etzebeth, super aggressive. You remember him bouncing busy and I think like knocking busy out uh, almost and bouncing a number of players <laughs> along the way. And um, he was raw and aggressive and in your face and like to get into a good fight. And that guy has matured into the ultimate Springbok leader, right? Um, very physical, but completely controlled their temp. The temp uh, <laughs> I was going to say uh, the temperature, but his temperament and his temper. So, um, and he's just a fantastic role model, right? Just always, always, always playing at the, at the highest level, at the peak. And, you know, you have to go... You have to go back a very long way, and I can't even remember when did Eben, you know, when did you look at Eben and think, yeah, nah, this guy's tired now; it's time to go. Um, you know, it's not 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 that I can recall uh, if ever. And so, what a professional that guy is. So, I just wanted to throw some stuff in there around Eben, and maybe I'll put together a video on on him. It's quite difficult. I mean, I don't know a huge amount of his background, etc. Right, so it's going to be warm, uh, 30 degrees expected. It actually came down on what they were expecting, predicting the temperature in Nell Spray to be about 35 degrees, but they, I see they've changed and it's come down to about 30. Um, and so this is for the rugby championship. So both teams can win the championship. Obviously, it's more difficult, well, not obviously, but more difficult for the, for the Pumas to win it. They've got to uh, get a bonus point win, five points, got to take the maximum, and they've got to stop South Africa from scoring any points not points on the board but any uh, championship points and then in that case both teams will be on the same uh, number of points and and then the pumas will actually go through because they would have beaten the box uh, twice and so that if they can do that then they deserve that title um you know and and they're a fantastic team so anyway Let's jump into the team announcement. Like I pre-warned you, forewarned you, I've got 
three little selections in there that you might be thinking, what the heck is going on with this brew? But anyway, I'm just going to share my thoughts and have a little bit of fun, you know. In the World Cup, I did a couple of things too. Uh, threw in a little more of an Ori here and there. I predicted Scotland will beat Ireland. The Irish nearly friggin' uh, went insane. I tell you what, the personal messages I got from the Irish, I was just, guys, I'm just having fun. It's just a bloody permutation, you know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, let's jump in. So front row, uh, we got um, Bongi, Malherba, and uh, Ox. And then packing down behind them, we got Eben and Ruin Nokia. And so this is the thing, you know, is I think a lot of people expect so much from the box, right? Because we are double World Cup winners and, you know, we, ex we expect that we're just going to get with this depth, there's going to be a whole bunch of new players that we're just going to be the best in the world all the time, not not all of you guys think that, but a lot of people put have that expectation. And you must remember the great teams of the past, whether it was like uh, that 2000, that 99, 2000 Wallabies team, the English team of 2003, round right about there, uh, the All Blacks team, you know, you could go back all the way from like 2010 all the way to 2015. And then uh, the Springbok team, 2009, and also the Springbok team. What, what makes those teams have in common is that they had such good experience and such a good system and such good coaching. The environment in which they were in, if one or two guys dropped out, those other people could come in and they would look just as good. And you think, wow, this depth is good, right? So like England in 2003, no matter who was packing in, in that scrum as lock and they went through a number of locks next to martin johnson but because they had you know hill um i forget that other guy neil back and then L lawrence delalio and and that that um the forward the front row and they also swapped out hookers a, a few times those guys whoever came in looked good because they were surrounded by professionals and matt dawson and johnny wilkinson and um and, and and that whole crew, right? But that's the that's the nature of that system. And the same thing with the All Blacks. It's just like whoever came in, surrounded by Dan Carter and Kieran Reed and Richie McCaw, they look good because that whole team was so good. And the same thing with the Springboks. So the reason why I'm bringing this up here is because out of I think we're only going to find like two or three guys a season that we really think, hey, are going to be able to make that step up, right? Because we've got quite a few guys to replace. And so far, Ruin Nokia is one of those guys that um, I think is is phenomenal. And uh, he, he's done really well. I've got some great stats that I can share with you later this week. And, and that shows in terms of the consistency um, that he's been able to be selected so consistently because of his performances. So this is a guy that uh, I have high hopes for. And, you know, we've got, look, the, the reality is Franco Mostert at the next World Cup is going to be about 36 and Eben's going to be about 35. Again, I'm going to share some stats with you at the end of the, the, the rugby championship. And then we've got Ach here, we've got uh, Lurt, and we've got Jan Klein. Jan Klein might be a, a, a little bit, uh, a Jean Klein, sorry, uh, long in the tooth by the time the next World Cup comes. So it's going to be important for guys like, Ruin Nokia to step up and, and maybe one other lock to come in. Right. So then in the back row, I've got Peter Steff, Corbus, uh, sorry, Jasper Viesa, and then Sia. And so that would form our, what I believe right now is our strongest uh, forward pack. And that's a solid, solid forward pack there. Now, this is where the changes come in for me. Right. So at Scrum Half, I am taking Corbus out. And I'm putting Grant Williams in there. Grant was expected to be back and only missed the tour. But I haven't heard any updates. So if he is not healthy and haven't, hasn't recovered from his arm injury, I'm putting Jaden Hendrickson in there. And then I think he's going to partner with Pollard and then Damien Delende and Jesse. I think we really missed Damien Delende's physicality and the inside channel uh, over the weekend. And then Kurt Lee, Vili, and Cheslin. I must admit, I've watched that game back and I've watched it 
rewound it, slow motion, all the attack options, etc. And I'm actually really, really, really tempted to put Fussy in there because Fussy had a had a really good game, and that guy is coming on leaps and bounds. Um, and he's played more games than Vili in the fullback position this year. Okay, so the surprise for you, some of you guys might be uh, Kubis being out. Some of you may not be a surprise, but here's where my some of my bolts is coming. Right, I'm going for six two split on the bench. I've got Melka Marks. Uh, Stena Kamp, I spelt his name wrong there, apologies. Uh, actually, I'll correct that for the video. Um, so we've got Stena Kamp there, and then Vincent Koch. And here's what I put a bolt to. I think we know what we get in Murat. And Jansa van Rensburg, he's been in carrying tackling bags and been on uh, the whole journey, but he hasn't got to play. So I'm thinking, hey, they've got, they got to give this guy a shot and at least see what else we got there. Um, in that locking department. And for uh, for me, is I think they really need to make sure that they maintain that physical dominance. And I don't think uh, Murat gave that um, in that game. And if Eben has to come off, they need sort of a heavy hitter. And I think Jansa van Rensburg can sort of bring that aggression and physicality. And so that's what I think for the box this weekend is to not take their foot off the gas in terms of their f physicality because the, the the Pumas are are very, very physical. They've lost uh, uh, Kramer, so there's going to be a little bit of a, a shuffle in their back line, and I suspect maybe they're, they're one of their number eights will shift to the side potentially. Uh, then I've got Elric Lowe. Elric Lowe is the second guy that I think has been a find, um, if you will, uh, of this season along with uh, Sasha Feinberg and Gomazulu. I think those three guys have really stepped up along with Apalele Fassi. I think those four guys have stood up and said, hey, we, we're putting our hand up here. We're good enough to be part of this Bok team and grow over the next uh, three years to get to the 2027 World Cup. Uh, Kwaka, you can't leave that, that guy out. And then I've got Hendrix, Hendrix here. And in brackets, so this is where I've left Kobus out of the entire um, squad. And I've brought in Fundenberg. And Fundenberg's only had two games. Uh, he was on tour in Argentina. But, you know, the game in, in Perth, it was, um, it was really coming down, raining cats and dogs. So he really couldn't get that opportunity to prove himself. So I'm going to, the same thing as Jansa von Rentberg, I'm going to put, put him in there. And he's used to playing on the half felt, so I thought, okay, let's let's see if they give him a shot. So if Williams is still injured, I think Vandenberg will be on the bench. If Williams plays, I think he starts, and then Hendricks uh, comes on. Now, before you come shoot me down, okay, Marnie LeBoc on the bench to close out the kicking. Now, I think Marnie's going to be on the bench. You can't dump that guy now because that a lot of that has to do with Russi. Uh, in the coaching team. They gave him an opportunity, but now at least give the guy an opportunity and keep a kicker on the field. So, Andre has to stay on the field because who else are you going to put in there, right? Unless you go for a 7-1 split. Who else are you going to put on there? You're going to put uh, Fassi at, at fullback and Willie, Vili, Willie, Vili on, uh, on as a sub or Lacanya Am or you go 5-3. But who plays fly half if Pollard goes off? All right, so who's going to do that? Is it going to be Cheslin? Is it going to be Vili? Or is it uh, Fassi? I wouldn't put Fassi in there. Um, so do you put Vili in there? Or do they pull out a, a bolter and bring in um, Hendrickser, Jordan Hendrickser from the Lions? But I haven't heard anything um, that he's he's been call, uh, recalled, right? So, you know, the... The box this this year have used um, five. Uh, sorry, in the in the uh, fly half position, they used four different fly halves. We used Pollard, we used Sasha, we used Marnie, and we used uh, Hendrixer. Right. So, what are our options right now? And I think they've got to give uh, Marnie a shot at fly half and move Pollard out to inside center. Um, 
that that's that's what I would think if Pollard gets tired, right, or something happens to him. But the thing is, is I watched that game too, and I'm gonna I've got some great analysis for you. And you know, I think Pollard is a phenomenal player. He's pretty much the last two World Cups been flawless for us, right? And in, in the last two World Cups, I think has missed one kick, uh, something in the final or something like that, right? Um, in the 2019 final, his first kick was was a miss. But other than that, two finals, I think he's only missed one out of those two finals. But he, he did miss a number of opportunities on attack, and I'll show you exactly how that operates. And so did Marnie, right? So, But I think Marnie, just in terms of the game that we're trying to play, will probably be better served to unlock that attack, right? Because our attack is making the meters, but they not having as many clean breaks and as many defenders beaten. So that's why I'm going with that guy. And I don't know what the options are right now because we don't have too many options. So I want to know what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Uh, I wanted to put in three bolters there. Jansa van Rensburg, Vandenberg. Libok's not really a bolter um, because I just think they don't have any options. And I think you can't do that where... You know, you pull the guy semi-final against England, um, like 30 minutes in. He's not there in the final. He's been out in the cold for most of of the season. You bring him on when you know he's he's not a, a clutch kicker. You know he's not a kicker to close out the game, and you take off the only kicker and put him in the spot. And to me, that's a team effort, right? And you, like. When I looked at that game again today, it's like the team put him in that position, right? The team missed so many opportunities, but unfortunately, he's the guy that takes the responsibility. It's like soccer, the guy who has to take the, the final penalty to win the game. It's not his fault, right? Obviously, you want him to convert that. And the fly half's role is to convert in those situations. But remember, is Stephen Lockham wasn't, didn't kick for poles. Um, Henry Honeyball rarely, if ever, kicked for poles. Butch James rarely, if ever, cooked, uh, kicked for poles. He's a good fly half, but they didn't want to leave him out, but they couldn't rely on, on those guys as their kicker. Right? So the same as the French. The French don't often use their fly halves as the goal kicker. They use their fullbacks. You know, it's uh, Ramos at the moment. It used to be that South African guy, uh, South African-born uh, French fullback, Scott whatever. And years before that, um, the previous two scrum halves kicked for posts um, and, and not the fly half. So the French have been doing it for years. You even see it still in, 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 the, in the top 14. Um, it's, not all, it's not all, in fact, uh, Rory Cockett, uh, the Natal Shark scrum half, when he went to France, he was kicking for posts when he was over there, right? So it, if Libok's not the guy to win you the, the World Cup or the championship, make sure you've got a kicker on, right? Is, uh, in teams past, we didn't take off Percy without having a kicker. We learned our, our lesson with uh, Henry Honeyball and that in the 1997 Lions in the second test in Durban. I think we tried three different kickers there. We tried Percy, we tried Henry Honeyball, and somebody else. I can't remember off the top of my head. Right? And that's what cost us that game. So... Uh, Henry Honeyball didn't become the world's worst uh, fly half uh, because of that. So I think it's unfair for Marnie, and uh, I want to show Marnie the love and support that he deserves. He's a good player. In fact, he's more than a good player. He's, he's a special talent. And uh, he was thrown in the pressure cooker. Yeah, and you know what? He's, it proves he's not the guy for that right now. Maybe over the next two, three years, he can work on that and improve on that. But he's still a very good fly half that doesn't have to be the only guy that's kicking for poles. Okay. But if they do, if they do, they can't rely. And if, sorry, let me clear that up. If they do leave Marnie in there, I don't think it's fair to take off the number one kicker and say, okay, well, let's, let's give Cheslin a crack and let's give Fuff a crack when he comes back. It has to be a proper kicker. So I don't know how they solve that problem. I really don't. Down the road, you've got Sasha, who can play inside center, can play fullback. You've got Damian Willems, who can play fullback. You can, he can play inside center. He's not that re reliable at, at kicking. Um, he's had a couple of games at fly half too. So that gives a lot of options, right? With Sasha, Marnie, Damian Willems, and Pollard. Those players can all rotate between uh, first receiver, fly half, 
or inside center and some of them fullback. I don't think Pollard at fullback, but in any case, so there's lots of options down there. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, I want to know if you can subscribe and let me know all your thoughts, your comments, etc., uh, on that team and and what you think. And uh, thanks again for watching. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Cheers. <music>